UTPA women's soccer and volleyball back in action in a pair of exhibitions. The UTPA men's golf team is gearing up for the WAC championships, and we've been telling you about it for weeks. Now it's time to look back at the Bronx ninth annual Bay Fishing Tournament. Fate. This is Bronx Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronx Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. The UTBA women's soccer team training almost every day, sometimes twice a day, in order to get ready for their second season of existence. Included in the training, three exhibition matches. The Bronx opened up the exhibition slate with a 2-0 win at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and this past weekend, the Bronx got their lone home exhibition match of the spring. Taking on St. Mary's, and this was a bit of a unique setup, Instead of playing a pair of 45-minute halves, the Bronx and Rattlers played three 25-minute sessions. Freshman Haley Oliver made a number of saves in the first two sessions. Erica Gonzalez took over in the third, and the Bronx played a player short in order to gain experience playing in such situations. Neither team got on the board as they played to a scoreless draw. I feel we did really well knowing that we don't have any subs, but I mean, this is what we trained all spring for, so it was worth it. We had to play down a, a person in the last 25 minutes, something that we wanted to do on purpose to kind of test ourselves. And we didn't concede a goal uh, in that 25 or in the whole game. So that was a positive. We defended well and then and came away with a draw. But at the same token, I don't think our performance was, was um, where it needed to be. Uh, but I'm sure, like everything else, we'll improve uh, tremendously for the next game. As for the men's soccer team, they just announced the first part of their first recruiting class in 18 years welcoming in 14 new student athletes. You can see the complete list on your screen. The roster currently includes two forwards, five midfielders, four defenders, and two goalkeepers. Complete bios on this recruiting class can be found at utpabronx.com. Yeah, this is you know, a very exciting moment. Um, you know, very proud that we can announce the players and, and very pleased that they've chosen to join us for our, our inaugural you know, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley men's soccer team. Um, but very pleased with the, the quality that we brought in. Um, you know, we've spent a long time, it's been a massive um, challenge to try and recruit a whole team in one year instead of just a class. Um, but it's been a great challenge, you know, it's been a lot of fun that we've been able to put those pieces and put those players together, you know, in their relative positions. So we feel very good. Um, you know, I'm pleased that we brought in players that I believe have the character um, to lead a brand new team. Uh, we need players who, who see and understand a long-term vision and they have the leadership not only to help us get there but also help the new players that come in and the younger players you know, achieve that goal too. And among the first group of signees you've announced are a pair of local players. Yeah, very excited again. The, you know, the best players here locally have, have chosen to, to join us. I think a lot of people, I was incredibly you know, overwhelmed um, you know, just with the, the energy um, and the excitement that our program, this brand new soccer program, has um, you know has had not only here locally but also across the state. So many young players um, here in the state of Texas and across the country have been reaching out to us, wanting to be part of a new program. So that's been very exciting. And additionally, having um, local players be a part of that, you know, is fantastic. Um, you know, we have possibly the um, you know he's the leading scorer, you know, in the valley. Um, this year, Isidro Martinez, um, you know, I'm very pleased that he's chosen to join us. Um, we have another Brownsville player, uh, Juanito Garcia, who was an NAIA, you know, national finalist as well. Um, so certainly a lot of talent that I think the, the local community will, will thoroughly enjoy coming out to watch um, and support. The soccer team's not the only fall sports making headlines this spring. UTPA Volleyball on the court for its lone exhibition, taking on UT Brownsville. First action for Dallas Jasper, who redshirted in the fall, and there's her first kill. Bronx up 1-0. Next play, Jasper shows her defensive ability as well. Combines with Alicia Watson on the block, 2-0 Bronx. Plenty more from Watson coming up right now. Comes up with kills not once, not twice, but thrice. 
and then the block solo. Bronx up 6-3, but they drop the first set 15-25. Second set begins with more Watson, and then Watson with Haley Durham. Another block for Durham with Kira Hill. Set tied at six, but the Bronx dropped this one 20-25. So the Bronx need to win three in a row to pull out the match, and off to a strong start in the third set. These two kills by Hill, and then Jasper with a pair of blocks, assisted on the second by Watson, Bronx up 5-1. Late in the set, it's match point for the Ocelots, but Watson having none of that. And then Mary Kate Clark dumps it in. 25-24 Bronx. The Bronx had their backs against the wall three more times, but Watson with a kill to tie it at 26, and then 28. Then it's Clark. Ties the set at 29, the Bronx take it 31-29 and the Bronx rode that momentum like a tidal wave. Watson makes it 3-0 in the fourth. Hill makes it 5-2, and then Anjanae Janda makes it 6-3. Watson had a great serving day too. This ace makes it 10-5, and this one makes it 23-14. Then Watson gets airborne. Bronx take the set, 25-15. On to the fifth. Tied at two when Jasper comes up with the block and then teams up with Hill for another one. Then Janda back to serve, ace. Next serve, she does it again. Six to two Bronx. Now it's 13-7, make it 14-7. Clark and Durham on the block, it's match point. And on the next play, Clark finishes it. The Bronx pull off the comeback to beat the Ocelots three to two. In the beginning we kind of we started off strong, and then once we started getting to, you know, 15 in the middle of matches, they put some really good pressure on us, and it was just up to us to kind of just dig deep and go back to what we were just working on in practice for all of these weeks. And I think we did a re really good job, like, pulling it together at the end of this set. It was fun. Yeah, no, like, back and forth. We got to dug ourselves in a hole early and got down 0-2, and then the girls really settled down, and I thought we did a good job of executing the things we were supposed to. We quit making the unforced errors and started putting pressure on them, uh, really served to where we were supposed to, and, and the tide slowly changed, and I think that long, that long battle in, in set three where our kids just didn't want to give in, um, I think that was kind of almost a turning point, maybe even for this program already. Uh, I think in years past, I think maybe they give in. Of course, it was just an exhibition match, so none of the stats matter. Still, it was odd for Coach Lowry to be coaching against UTB after coaching there the last six seasons. It's still a lot of old faces and stuff, and we, we definitely had a, an inside track scouting plan. And, and I thought our girls, even though you know what the other team's going to do, it, it's, a, it's, it's a lot to go out and execute it. And we didn't execute it early on, and I thought we really did exploit the few weaknesses that we know are there. Uh, late in the match, so um, it was fun. You know, I, I know the girls on the other side had a good, a good time with it because a couple times I was calling them out on stuff I knew they were going to do, and they just kind of looked across the net and rolled their eyes. So it, it was fun. UTPA men's golf is preparing all season for one thing, the WAC championships. Next time for On Country, we preview the biggest meet of the season. We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. The UTPA men's golf team completed their regular season this week, and that means next week it's time for the WAC Championships. Romeo Villarreal has the story. 
The UTPA men's golf team is heading to Arizona to compete in the WAC Championships at Wigwam Golf Course. Playing in Arizona's higher elevation offers some unique challenges to golfers unfamiliar to the conditions. Arizona golf is a little bit different than the rest of the country, I would say. First of all, elevation uh, plays a factor. Ball flies a little further. The golf courses are, uh, they kind of say like it's playing in a dome, immaculate grass. So it'll be really fun for the guys. Uh, it'll be a new experience for them, but I'm expecting to see some pretty good golf. I think that Sacramento State, the, the grass, the climate was similar to what they'll see in Arizona. I think last week at Texas State, they had some good competition they played against. So that was nice for them to get a feel, uh, get the competitive juices flowing. So. I would say those two tournaments were the, the best preparers for conference. In preparation, the team has changed their workout regimen to include some unorthodox workouts to prepare the team both physically and mentally. Our workouts have changed a little bit. We're doing uh, yoga Friday mornings just to help us in a better mental state and uh, running and swimming just to get better, uh, better uh, mentally prepared and, uh, for stamina. Just uh, the Monday Mondays are long. It's uh, all day, eight, eight, eight in the morning till six o'clock at night, so just so we don't get mentally drained, just trying to install that into our workouts. The team is very young, with four freshmen on the roster, but everyone on the team has improved dramatically since they first arrived at UTPA. I think attitude and uh, experience is probably the, the biggest gains that they've made. Um, swing changes and physical changes in their golf game, that's more long-term stuff, but um, just being more mature out there, I think, is the biggest is the biggest change that they made from day one of the season to right now. In the beginning of the semester, everyone kind of did their own thing, but now we're all, I mean, we fit everybody in one car. We all go to practice and kind of just do more more team team aspects. So becoming as a team, I think. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. The UTPA baseball team has faced perhaps the most difficult schedule in the WAC so far this season, facing four of the top five teams in succession including three series on the road. The Bronx concluded that stretch at Bakersfield over the weekend, but first they came home for a midweek doubleheader against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Game one, Bronx down one nothing out of the gate, but with a runner on second, Logan Landon comes through. Hops into the Bronx bullpen for a ground rule double, game tied at one. After a hit batsman, Corey Davis. Landon scores, two to one Bronx, and then during the ensuing at bat, wild pitch. Jesus Garcia scores, three to one Bronx. Second inning, Islanders trying to respond, but the double play is Parker Gallego's best friend. Next inning, Casey Thomas, sit down in your seat. Seven innings, six hits, no walks, two strikeouts for Gallegos. On to the fourth, still three to one, not anymore. Alexis Hernandez with his first two career RBI in his first career at bat with the bases loaded, five to one Bronx. Next batter, Cole Lankar, six to one Bronx. After an RBI ground up by Victor Garcia Jr. makes it seven one, the hit parade resumes. First with Landon, and then with Jesus Garcia. The Bronx sent 10 batters to the plate to score six runs and take a nine one lead. Seventh inning. The Bronx can end the game if they score two more runs. That's one. Landon's sixth home run of the season. It's 10 to one. And then with Garcia at third and one out, Manny Laredo. Winner, winner, chicken cacciatore down on Sutherland Street dinner. Gallegos records his first home win and first complete game. Bronx win, 11 to one. Uh, the key to my success yesterday, I believe, was just uh, not walking people. Throwing strikes over the middle and letting them get themselves out. Uh, we worked on it before, and our coach has been telling us it's been bad for us to have so many freebies and just wanted to minimize the walks. The goal was one or less, and I hit my goal. You know, the first game, uh, we pitched well. Parker Gallegos, we needed a, a good pitching performance, um, and, and Parker gave us one. Um, and we also, uh, we also hit the ball well. Um, anytime you can score, you know, 11 runs, your offense did a nice job. But uh, we needed the pitching performance uh, that Parker gave us, uh, so we played well that first game. Game two. Now tell me if the beginning of this script sounds familiar. Bronx down one nothing, this time in the second. Two on, one out when Jacob Huckabee lays down the suicide squeeze. Tie game. Next batter, Scott Mercer. Drives in Manny Laredo, Bronx up two to one. One batter later, instead of a wild pitch, how about an errant pickoff throw? 
brings home Mercer, three to one Bronx. Fourth inning, this is where the script varies. Bronx down four to three, but three stray hits with two outs, including this one by Longcar to tie the game. Next inning, Logan Landon at third with one out, and the pinch hitter is at your cordon. Bang, five to four Bronx. Now the Islanders offense exploded from there. It's 14 to six in the eighth when Alexis Hernandez hits this RBI single. Caps off a four for four game and a five for seven three RBI day. But the Bronx dropped the nightcap 14 to seven. I was just focused, seeing the ball really good. I was just uh, trying to help my team out, uh, do what's best for the team and trying to stay focused the whole game. Well, you know what, Alexis, uh, Hit the ball pretty pretty good. Um, he's in there for offensive reasons because we need a little bit uh, more offensive punch. Um, but the, the second game was totally opposite of the first game. We didn't get any pitching. Uh, we committed way too many errors. Um, you know, we scored seven runs. That should have been enough to win. The Bronx then opened up another whack road series, this time at Bakersfield, dropping the first game 5-1. Freshman Zach Martinez with his first career start, going a career high four and a third, striking out a career high two. Ryan Jackson, three and two-thirds scoreless to end it. First time Coach Ventrana has used nothing but freshman pitchers in the opening game of a conference series. Game two was all Bakersfield, 15 to three in seven innings. Jesus Garcia led the Bronx on offense, going two for three with an RBI. Scott Mercer with the Bronx, other RBI. Final game, a 4-1 loss for the Bronx. After giving up four runs in the first, Parker Gallegos and Justin Quinonez combined for eight shutout innings. Canonez, the final three in the third. Do you like fishing? How about raising money for student athlete scholarships? Well, this past weekend, a number of anglers did both. Coming up on Bronx Country, we take you out to South Padre Island for bait. Every year, UTPA Athletics hosts a bait fishing tournament out on South Padre Island, better known as bait, in order to raise money for student athlete scholarships while having a good time. Romeo Villarreal reels in the story. The Bronx Athletic International Tournament, better known as bait, is an annual fishing tournament hosted by UTPA Athletics to raise money for student scholarships. We have a lot of people who um, realize that this is a fishing tournament, that not only they get to exercise uh, their fishing expertise, but they get to, uh, all the proceeds go to student athlete scholarships, so they're happy to, to fish for that. With the university in close proximity to an island, Bait offers the athletics department a method of fundraising not available to most universities. I think it's like an extension of our brand, an extension of the athletic program. It's nice to be able to, to include fishing in athletics. I mean, I don't think it's something that happens all the time across the country. I think we're in a unique situation and we, we definitely exercise that. This year's big winner at bait was six-year bait veteran Rick Guerrero, who won every individual fish category and the overall team category for a clean sweep in this year's tournament. Rick uses the tournament to spend time with his family and give back to the university his daughter got her master's degree at. We did win the largest flounder, largest trout, largest red today in the Pan American Bronx tournament uh, and grand champion overall. Uh, had a good team, my daughter, my wife, and Chris Daniels, my regular partner. We're involved with the school in fundraising. Uh, my daughter's a master's graduate from UT and um, in Edinburgh, and really enjoy that school, enjoyed the fundraising with them, and uh, everything's been good. We'll continue fishing with them and continue helping them fundraise for their athletics department. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. UTPA men's tennis in action at the second WAC cluster, starting off with a 6-1 win over Chicago State. The Bronx ground out wins at number two and three doubles before taking five out of six singles matches. The lone loss came in three sets. Four of the wins were in straight sets. The Bronx closed out WAC play with a 4-3 win over Seattle. The Bronx ended up playing four 4-3 matches during the WAC season. After dropping the doubles point, Bronx won at each of the first four singles courts including a gutsy three-set clincher at number four by Elliot Johnstone. Lots of reasons that made it challenging, especially, you know, we, were, we had a target on our back and the boys are getting used to handling that because it's, you know, within a year we went from being the lowest seed in the conference to now being one of the top seeds. So 
Uh, it's something different uh, that I have to handle uh, as a coach and do a better job of, and the boys need to go through it as well. So uh, it's a good collective process we have to go through, and it's, it's awesome to be able to struggle through it and find ways and, and to come out on top. All five of the Bronx WAC matches officially in the books. So here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx finished four and one in the WAC, earning the number two seed in the WAC tournament and a spot in the semifinals. The WAC tournament runs April 24th through the 26th in Kansas City. You know, we were disappointed uh, we didn't get the one seed because we had a chance here at home against Mexico State. You know, we won that doubles point in that match, and they came out and took it to us in singles, especially the bottom of the lineup, and they're good. They're deep. Um, so we're improving uh, just as they are. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the boys, you know, it was something after that happened against New Mexico State. We're like, all right, let's get back on it and fight for it and do our best to withhold at least a two seed. Uh, and if something happens with, on the other side, I maybe mean, we can get that one seed. Uh, didn't happen, so we're a two seed. We're proud of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a big turnaround in one year, uh, and the boys have done it. So, uh, yeah, we are, we're happy about it and humble about it and, and, keep, and we're hungry, so just keep working. UTPA track and field with four wins on Saturday at Texas A&M Corpus Christi's Islander Dash. The engaged couple of Javier Cartero and Cristina Santiago Bravo, who celebrated their anniversary last Thursday with wins in the hammer throw. Bravo also took the javelin, while Leokawan Williams won the triple jump. Complete results can be found at utpabronx.com. The Islander Dash not the only place track and field was winning last week, as 10 of their student athletes earned winter academic all-whack honors. To be eligible, student athletes had to have cumulative GPAs of at least 3.2 and participate in at least half of the Bronx indoor contest. Congratulations to Erica Anderson, Alyssa Canul, Javier Cartero, Robin Gayoso, Justin Gonzalez, Antonio Gonzalez, Mar Gonzalez, Brian McDonald, Melissa Rodriguez, and Grady Young. Want to help prepare our student athletes for excellence in life? Then join the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the proceeds go directly to student athlete scholarships, so visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. UTPA baseball gets to host a WAC series for just the second time this year, welcoming Chicago State to town Friday at 7, Saturday at 6, and Sunday at noon, before our midweek trip to Prairie View A&M. Track and field has its annual West Coast trip to the Mount Sac Relays, Cal State LA, and Long Beach State. Men's tennis is off to Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and the golf teams are headed to the WAC championships. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, go to the Bronx! our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. 
We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, new opportunities for the 21st century.